Let me start by explaining why I wanted a smart shower. So we're making this shower bigger. If you remember, originally it was about this size. Now we got rid of this dead space back here, so that pushes what would be a traditional valve over here. But the other thing we did is made it bigger this way because we plan on putting the shower door over here. That way somebody could be at the sink while somebody can get in and out of the shower. That was our biggest problem is the bathroom was only big enough for one person. The challenge would be this. If the, the glass of this part of the shower, let's just say it came to here, that would be pretty far to reach in to hit a traditional valve over there. So then we thought about, well, if we don't put it there, maybe we could put it on this wall or maybe even over here, and then that way you could reach it from when you're getting in the shower. The challenge with that is, if it's way over here, that means the hot and cold water have to come all the way around this wall to the valve, get mixed to whatever temperature you want, and then make its way all the way back to the shower head over here. You really want the shower head away from the door. You know, we didn't want it on this end, we wanted it down there. So we didn't like any of those solutions. So that's why I wanted this smart shower and the thing about the smart shower is it breaks up the components it introduces an electronic control that can be put anywhere within 30 feet of the actual valve itself so this is the control panel and it has two user settings on it so I can say I like 103 degrees for my shower my wife can say she likes 105 I can say I like it just out of the main shower head. My wife can say, well, I like it out of a mix of the shower head as well as the body sprays. We can customize our shower and save our favorites, okay, whatever we want. Now this particular one has two buttons on it for two functions. There's, there's two outputs that come from the valve. So you can get them in either two or four, depending upon how many devices you have. You can have a regular shower head, you can have a hand sprayer, you can have body sprays, you can have a rain head too, if you get the one with four outputs. I only got the one with two, that's fine for me because I'm just going to have a shower head and body sprays. But this is the guts of it. Now, this we're going to put over here so that we can reach it right easily from getting in the door. And you can also reach it obviously when you're in the shower. But the guts of the system is this control valve. This is hidden in the wall. The incoming water comes in the bottom, hot and cold, and out the top you have output, output ports A and B. A is always your primary, which would be the shower head, and B is going to be our body sprays. Works great for us. Now it's very important that this control valve be accessible, not only for in case of something going wrong with it, you need to replace it. By the way, it does come with a five-year warranty for the original homeowner. Um, there are these filters in here that need to be pulled out every now and then and cleaned. There's a little filter in here. So you have to be able to get to those. So that's the real challenge of this type of a shower is, well, where do you put that kind of thing? So I was thinking we have, there's a stud bay here. It could go in there. Um, but that would mean on the other side of this wall there would have to be an access panel. Now, I chose a little bit of a creative solution. Some people can, if you have a big enough vanity, by the way, you can put this inside the vanity. But I don't have that situation here. It's too small of a vanity. And I also have a lot of pipes on this wall over here. So what I decided to do was mount it here, but it's going to face the opposite direction. Now, on the opposite side of this wall is my other bathroom. They tend to put two bathrooms next to each other because it simplifies all the plumbing. On the other side of this hole that I've already cut in the wall is a big mirror in my other bathroom. So this is going to get mounted inside this hole right here and I can get to it by taking the mirror off the wall. I look at it as there's always going to be a mirror on that wall, so whether it be me or the next homeowner, so I didn't think this was a bad solution. Plus, it's pretty much right under the light, so it's perfectly going to be hidden by a mirror, even if they change the mirror eventually. So I think that's a good solution. Plus, I've got my incoming water right here, which will just go straight up to the connections. 
and I'll have the output ports come right over here to the, uh, the heads. So it's a really great solution. On this side is where the control panel will be, and the wire that goes and connects the two is 30 feet long, so it's plenty long enough. So you've got the valve that goes in the wall, you've got the control panel. Those are the two most expensive components. The next one is actually uh, a third and final component that is optional. And I think it's worth it, though. It is a battery backup. In case the power goes out while you're in the shower, by default, the thing will shut down. So you don't want that to happen if you're in the middle of soaping or washing your hair or whatever. So a battery backup will allow you to finish your shower or even take a shower during a blackout. So I think that's important. This I'm going to actually mount under the sink in my other bathroom, as well as the power supply. I'm going to put an outlet under the vanity of the other bathroom as well. And that way I'll be able to get to those. If the power supply dies, I can easily get to it. If uh, I need to change the batteries, I can easily get to them too. So now we're going to go through the installation. This was my first time working with PEX pipe, and I gotta say, it was really easy. I cut it with just a, a snip and um, take the burrs off the end and put the valves right on. They slide in perfectly and it's just a great solution especially for this valve you can see these shutoffs work great here and then the elbows on the other side it's great because it's easy to adapt pex to copper no soldering at all So the way this works is I had the hot and cold coming in from the rest of the, the sinks and everything. That's the old copper there. I had to cut that off and I use these shark bite connectors. These things are just push on. You don't need to do any kind of soldering or glue or anything like that. They are really easy to use. And this is PEX pipe, which is plastic which is really easy to use as well, because as you can see, it just, it's very flexible. No problem at all. And that goes up, the supply goes up to the bottom of the control unit. And then out the top, we have the two outlets, A and B. And A goes up to, that will be the shower head. And B goes to the three body sprays that I have here. And they are spaced, everything is spaced 18 inches apart. So I happened to get my plumbing inspections done this week too, the rough plumbing that is, and I passed, everything was good. But as with when you pay for permits, you get the advice of the inspectors, not just, I mean, they're there to protect your house and your the occupants, of course, and as well as make sure that you're compliant with code. But they also give you free advice, and that's what I got. So when he looked at this, he said, I'm not going to fail you for it, but he said it's not going to achieve balanced pressure across the three heads. Now, why not? Well, he gave me a bit of a drawing, and he said the way to do a pressure balancing loop is actually like this. And he said the water comes in and hits a T, and then goes in both directions down the loop, and from there it feeds into your shower heads evenly from both sides. That is a perfectly balanced pressure loop. Okay, the challenge there is this would require five T's, one, two, three, four, five, but that's fine. But these fittings here, these are also what, what are known as drop T's or drop ear T's, okay? That fitting is a screw-in fitting, kind of like this, where the shower head or these are the uh, the body sprays would screw into but it has pipes coming in from both sides so the trouble is those fittings don't exist in 
shark bite. So I would have to change the whole thing over to copper if I wanted to truly go with this design. And like I said, I really don't want to do that. So what am I going to do? So I did a little bit more research and I found that the key is that the water coming in has to hit a T and go in multiple directions. And so I came up with an alternative design that reconfigures these components that I have here. This one has water coming in from the side. It hits a T, splits, hits another T, splits in all these directions, and evenly feeds these three shower heads. So that's the alternative design that will work with the components that I have here. And this is one of the beautiful things about shark bite fittings is that with a little orange adapter ring, you can take them off. So let me show you how easy this is. All you have to do is pop it on and give it a squeeze and off it comes. That's it. Sometimes it's a little hard. They're not trivial, but they do come apart and they can be changed. And that's the, the point. So I'm going to reconfigure this and make it work. The other thing I'm going to do is, you know, he kind of gave me some feedback that these shower sprays, the body sprays, are a little bit far apart. I had them 18 inches apart. So, um, did a little bit more research and found 12 inches is more common. So I'm going to keep the middle one and I'm going to lower this one and I'm going to raise that one so that there's three of them in a row and they're going to be a foot apart. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, that was the design. And that's what I came up with. So the water comes in through the top, hits this T, goes in both directions, hits these T's, goes in all directions evenly to fill all three shower heads with the same pressure. That's at least the intent. But before I cover up the walls, I'm actually going to test it after the, the floor is in and I have a shower pan. I need to put water in the shower pan anyway, so that's a perfect time to test it. So that'll be the next thing that I do. Visit my website, handydad.tv, for more great ideas and information. Be sure to subscribe to be the first to know when new videos are posted.